Hi friend, you are going to work on science with me just like we did last week. You are going to need your paper that was in your envelope and it looks like this. It looks like this and it um, is a front and back. It has something on the front and it has something on the back and you guys are gonna need that. We are going to follow along just like we did last week with our exploration. Hi, it's Doug. Whenever I get the chance to visit a forest, I love to look for animals. Things like toads and newts and bugs. Once, I even found a baby owl staring at me from up in a tree. Have you ever tried to look for animals? They can be kind of hard to find. My friends are always telling me that they like to go on hikes with me because I'm pretty good at finding animals. But you can be good at it too. I can let you in on a few of my secrets, some tricks that I have to help me find them. If you were with me on the last mystery, we wondered, why do woodpeckers peck wood? And we saw a few different animals on a walk, all of them working to find food. So let's go for another walk today. At this time, I'll give you some tricks so that you can go out and find animals too. Now, one of my favorite tricks is to look under things whether it's under a nice damp log or even just under some leaves. There are some animals that stay under these things because they prefer to stay nice and wet or moist and not get dried out by the sun. Oh, look under that leaf. See there? That's an animal. Do you know what this is? Look, there's another one over here. It's a snail. It has a shell on its back and its eyes are up here at the end of those long stalks. You might notice a little black dot on each end. If I try to get really close to a snail though, and I touch it, watch what it does. Oh, you see that? What did the snail do? Why do you think it did that? What did the snail do when it was touched and why do you think it did that? Take a second to think before we find out. In today's activity, you're going to use your imagination. You're going to pretend that you're a snail. You're going to curl up in your shell and then stretch out to explore. You'll look around with eyes on the ends of your eye stalks. And when you see something that scares you, you're going to do what a snail does when it gets scared. My friend Pat will show you what to do step by step. Stand up and find a spot where you have space to move. When you're done with this step, click the arrow on the right. All right, stand up and find somewhere to move. Pretend you're a snail. Most of your body is in your shell, so curl up like a snail in a shell. You'll have to imagine the shell. Okay, you're gonna be on the floor. You're gonna be curling up like a snail. You're gonna to have to imagine that you are a snail. Reach out from your shell. Stretch out your eye stalks. Look all around. Once you've tried this, go to the next step. So your arms are your eyes. Your arms are your eyes. Look out. Here comes something that scares you. Pull back into your shell. <gasps> Try this one time, then go to the next step. Let's do it one last time. Reach out from your shell and look all around. When you see something scary, pull back. Good job. Go ahead and have a seat. Let's see what other animals we can find in the forest. Watch the... Now you know one trick for finding animals. Look under things like logs and leaves. But what else can you do? Let's keep going on our walk. I'll let you in on another trick for finding animals. Every once in a while, as you're walking along, stop, look all around. What you want to look for is any kind of movement. Like, look at the leaves of plants. Do you see anything moving here? I see something. Do you see it? It's that right there. 
that's something moving. It's some kind of insect. Here's another one. It's, do you know what this is? It's called a praying mantis. These are some of the biggest insects you can find near you. They might be as big as your hand. Now, these bugs can bite. I don't recommend getting your hand near their mouth. It might really pinch, but they don't have teeth and they're not dangerous. You can reach your hand out to try to touch one. Watch what happens when someone does. Oh, whoa. Here's another video. Oh, what did the praying mantis just do? Can you think of any reason why it might do this? It's time to use your imagination again. You're going to pretend that you're a praying mantis. Do what a praying mantis does when it gets scared. My friend Pat will show you what to do step by step. Stand up and find a spot where you have space to move. Pretend you're a praying mantis. Stand like this and be very still. Hope you're up and doing it. Mr. Omar's not going to tell you what you need to do because he's telling you. Someone tries to poke at you. Practice stretching up tall and spreading out your arms. Look big and fierce. Just like Pat. Let's do it one more time. Stand very still. Watch for the finger coming to poke you. Then look big and fierce. That's what a praying mantis does. You were fierce. Okay, go ahead and have a seat. Let's see what other animals we can find in the forest. Watch the next video. I've been giving you some tricks for finding animals, like looking under logs or looking for movement, such as bugs walking on leaves. But what else can you do? Let's keep going on our walk. I've got another trick to show you. You don't see any animals here, do you? But here's one trick for finding them. Look along the ground as you walk. Have you ever been walking along and you see a hole in the ground like this, there's probably an animal in there. Now, this doesn't work every time, but if you carry some seeds with you, like some sunflower seeds that I have here, leave a few sitting right outside the hole like this. Then back away and be very still and watch. Sometimes if you wait very patiently and quietly and just watch, you see that? This little creature is called a gopher. It lives underground in a hole. You might even have one in a hole in your yard or in a nearby park. Now, did you see what it was doing? It comes out and grabs a seed, but then it hurries back into its hole. And then it comes out, grabs another seed, and then hurries back into its hole. Why do you think it's doing that? Now, you're going to use your imagination again. You're going to pretend that you're a gopher. You're in your gopher hole, and you know someone has left seeds outside. You want to eat them, but you're scared of people. So you're going to do what a scared gopher does when there are seeds outside its hole. My friend Pat will show you what to do step by step. All right, let's pretend we are gophers. Pretend you're a gopher in a gopher hole. Get down in your hole like this. No one can see you when you're down in your hole. When you're in your gopher hole, go to the next step. Okay, I hope you're down in your gopher hole. There are seeds outside your hole. Do what the gopher does. Come out and get one seed, just one. Then go back in your hole. Imagine you've crouched down in your gopher hole, looking out. Do you 
you hear that? A person is walking by. Are you scared? <gasps> Crouch down in your hole. Go to the next slide and we'll play a game. Look and listen for danger. Whenever you think it's safe, come out of your hole and get a seed. Are you ready? Go. All right, whenever you think it's safe, hop out of your hole. Ooh. That doesn't sound safe. You went back down in your hole. And now it might be safe, so now you might go out and grab a seed. What do we have here? Oh, and now you might run away because you think there's someone trying to grab you. But now I think you can go out and grab a seed. <gasps> no, you need to go back in your hole. Great job. Go to the next slide. Today, on our walk through a forest, we saw three different animals. A snail, a praying mantis, and a gopher. We didn't see the animals just sitting there, though. All the animals had some kind of special behavior. They had ways they were acting. Look again at what the snail was doing. And the praying mantis. And the gopher. All of them are behaving in different ways. But is there anything that's similar in how they're behaving? What do their behaviors have in common? What do they all do that's the same? These animals we've seen today each had special ways they were acting. The snail tucked into its shell. The praying mantis stuck out its front legs and looked fierce. And the gopher would quickly go back into its hole after grabbing a seed. Even though these are all different behaviors, there's something that they have in common. There's a pattern or something similar. All of the animals were trying to stay safe from me. Look, the snail only tucked into its shell when I got close to it. If I backed away, then it would come out again. See? The praying mantis didn't hide from me. Instead, it tried to look big and fierce when I got close to it, as if to say, you don't want to mess with me. I'm big and scary. But when I backed away, then it went back to what it was doing as normal. The praying mantis was trying to stay safe by trying to scare me away. And then there was the little gopher. Notice how the gopher would poke its head out to grab seeds. But then once it saw me, it would quickly duck back into its hole to stay safe. Now, if you ever notice animals doing things like this, you might wonder, why are they trying to stay safe from me? I'm not going to eat them. The animals don't know that, though, especially if you're bigger than they are. They're scared when they see you. All these animals were trying to stay safe from danger. Just like animals need to find food, they also need to find safety from danger. It's one of the things animals need to survive. By the way, that's one reason why it can be hard to find animals when you go out on a walk. Many animals are scared of us and hide, so you have to learn tricks, like to look under things, or leave seeds outside a hole and be very still, or look for movement in the trees. I hope you'll go for a walk and use some of these tricks to find animals yourself. You might see different animals depending on where you live, but you can start finding animals right away. And as long as the weather's warm enough, if you look under a log, in most places, you can almost always find little creatures like this called pill bugs. See if you can find out what they do to stay safe from danger. Stay curious and see you next mystery. All right, friends, you should have a page in your envelope that looks like this, and you should have a page in your envelope that looks like this. 
on this page, if you go on a nature walk, you can draw an animal that is saying, staying safe. You can write your name of your animal and you can write what, how it stays safe. On this page, you can draw what you saw on your nature walk. Now, you do not have to go on a nature walk, but if you go outside for a walk today, I would love for you to work on those two things. I would love for you to look for an animal and you can tell me what that animal does and how they stay safe. And you can also draw a picture and tell me what you drew on your nature walk. You do not have to go on a nature walk, but this is a great activity for you guys to go outside and look at the nature that is around you. If you finish this video and you still have time to work on Lexia or Dreambox, you should be doing that. Or you can do any activities from your choice board from this morning that you did not do. So you have plenty of things to choose from to keep you busy to work on, whether or not you go on a nature walk or whether you keep working on math and reading today. But I hope you enjoyed learning last week about what animals do to find food and today what animals do to stay safe. You guys are awesome and I'm so excited to see you for our last afternoon meeting of NTI here in